This is my TS100 soldering iron, and I have been using it as my main iron for about two and a half years. In this video, I want to talk about my experiences with this iron, what I like about it, and some of the issues that I worked around with. Some of these problems I see other makers have too. And finally, I asked on Twitter if you had any questions about it, so I'll also try answer those throughout the video. Before we get into it, I want to set some expectations. I'm not an expert when it comes to soldering irons. I'm just a hobbyist maker who does some soldering. Some weeks I do a decent amount of soldering, some weeks I do none. I have never used high-end gear, so I can't compare this to JBC irons or even higher-end hobbyist stuff like Hakko's. The best iron I've used before this was a Chinese soldering station. But what I can say is that this iron has worked out great for me. I do a mixture of true hole and surface mount soldering and it has been up to any task I've thrown at it. It also has some features that I like that are not directly related to soldering that makes it a good fit for me. But to give some balance, if we take a look at this Hackaday article on the TS100, the comments are less positive about it than me. Several people do not recommend it as a benchtop iron. I don't know what experience these people have, there is a very good chance to know a lot more about soldering than me. So maybe take that into consideration if you're thinking about getting one, but all I can do in this video is give my perspective on it. One of the huge advantages it has for me over a regular solder station is how small it is. So I don't have a dedicated maker space or lab, so I just use my desk for soldering. And when I'm not soldering or anything like that, it's hugely beneficial to be able to just completely clear off my desk. So I actually store it in a component drawer, so just a standard component drawer, and it fits the soldering iron and the heads, and I just leave the wire off to one side. I'll talk about the power cable in a minute, but this is a huge advantage for me. I love being able to do this. Another feature that it has that I really like is that it will automatically shut off if you haven't moved it for a while. I definitely left my previous solder and iron on overnight more than once, so this is a really useful feature for me. But before it completely shuts off, it'll first wait in a standby mode, where it reduces the temperature of the tip down to 200 degrees. If you pick it back up again in this mode, it will restore to your set temperature, and it actually works really fast. So normally they don't come with power supplies but you can buy kits that they do i did buy a kit with a power supply and it shipped with like a laptop style power supply so a big power brick and then a cable coming out from it and the power brick didn't bother me at all in fact i was happy enough with that because i have um, mounts underneath my desk that that sits on so i just have the cable coming up through a hole in my desk and it is this cable here. And this was one of my biggest problems with the TS100 when I got it first. It is not flexible at all and it's quite heavy. So it wasn't all that pleasant to be dragging this around you when you were soldering. How I got around this was I bought a cable off AliExpress that is for connecting it to probably LiPo batteries. So it has the barrel jack on one end and an XT60 connector on the other. And this is super flexible, so this was really easy to work with. And then to connect the new cable to the old existing cable, I actually built a bit of an adapter. So I have a barrel jack on one end and it's soldered to an XT60 connector on the other. So I just plug the laptop style cable into this the battery cable into this and now I have a nice and flexible wire for my TS100 and that was only about I don't know five dollars or so for that solution so that works really well for me. A good few people asked me on Twitter about the power supply and as I mentioned in the video I have a 19 volt 2.1 amp power supply, that's what came with the kit I got. But I thought it might be interesting to test the different ranges it claims it supports and see how that impacts how fast it heats up and things like that. So it gives you an idea what would be a good power supply to use with it. In the clip on the top I have my power supply set to 12 volts and on the bottom it's set to 24 volts. 
and you can see the 24 volt one heats up much faster and only takes 8 seconds. The 12 volt one is so much slower because the resistance in the heating element is constant so at 12 volts it uses a lot less power than at 24 volts. It takes a full 45 seconds to heat up. You can see by the current draw on each of the power supplies in the bottom and the top clip that the 12 volts only uses 1.4 and the 24 volts uses 2.8 amps. The ideal power supply would be a 24 volt 3 amp supply. The next thing I want to talk about is the stand. So I have been using this one since I got it. So basically it's the wire stand that comes with the TS100. So the other thing that came in this package is a stand. Obviously a very, uh... yeah, inside a binder clip. I don't know how you're actually meant to use the one that comes with it. I guess you're meant to bend the legs or something, but it didn't seem the most stable to me. So I just went with this. Perfect. So this has worked perfectly for me and I am not looking to change it. The stand even fits in the same component drawer, so I can put that away too. Another thing I want to talk about is the replacement heads. So they are a good bit more expensive on a TS100, especially if you're used to buying the Hakko clone style ones from AliExpress. These are about $10 each. And you can see this one is looking a little crusty, but this is actually the one that came with the soldering iron uh, two and a half years ago. I wouldn't solder every day or anything, but I have done quite a bit of soldering with this TS100 and specifically this head. This has soldered hundreds of power blockers, which I know aren't the most complicated thing in the world. There's only 10 solder points on it, but this has soldered thousands of solder points and is still in perfectly good shape. So this looks a little bit crusty up here, but the head tins perfectly fine and cleans up perfectly. And I don't even take really good care of it, to be honest. I use one of the wool uh, solder cleaners or steel wool solder cleaners. I don't always clean it off when I'm finished. And yeah, it's still rock solid, so it might be a bit more expensive, but I think economically it actually works out pretty good. Somebody asked me on Twitter about the range of heads that are available for it, and I think there's a pretty decent range. I think there's at least 8, or maybe it's 10, or something like that, but I have 3 of them. Now, which ones will work for you is going to be a personal preference, but I'll give you my opinion on the ones that I have. My favourite is this one here. It's kind of like a conical tip that's been cut across. So it has a fairly fine point for more delicate things like surface mount soldering. But it also has a fairly large surface area for bigger things like something that has a decent sized ground plan or whatever. So you can tell just from the markings here that I use this tip more than the other two. So I basically use this in all scenarios. I also have a chisel tip, I guess if I was doing something with really large ground planes or something like that, or a lot of ground planes, maybe I would use this one. It desperately looks like it needs a clean, but I don't use that one that much. Finally, we have the fine point one, and to be honest, I don't use this at all. Um, I, as I said, I use the first one for SMD soldering. The smallest thing I've soldered is 0603 on the Christmas trees, and I was able to use the first one no problem, so I didn't see a need for ever using this too much, to be honest. So maybe if I was soldering something smaller by hand, I would use this, but I haven't needed it so far. It's also worth mentioning that there are two different types of heads you can get from it. There seems to be original ones and then third party ones. The original ones are about $10 and then the third party ones are about 7 or 8 I only have the original ones so I can't comment on how good the third party ones are, but for the small price difference I think it's probably worth just getting the original ones. The TS100 also supports custom firmware using the built-in micro USB, 
but I haven't actually touched the firmware that shipped with mine, so if you're kind of worried, is that any good or not, I, I can't really comment how good it is compared to the custom firmware. I haven't had any problems with it. I don't have an accurate way of measuring the te the temperature of the tip, so I wouldn't be able to tell how good or accurate the stock firmware is compared to the custom firmware anyways. As I said, I haven't had any problems with the soldering iron, so I'm happy to leave it as it is. That's it for my look at the TS100 soldering iron. Did you agree with the video? Did you disagree? Is there any other questions that you have on it? Make sure you let me know in the comments below. If you have one yourself, is there any other things that bother you with it? Or have you solved things in any other way? I'd be really interested to hear about it. I also have a Discord server if you want to discuss this topic further, or if you want to ask questions about any of my previous projects, or even something that's not related to my videos at all. People are really helpful in there, so it's actually a great place to ask. I also really want to thank my GitHub sponsors for helping support the channel. If you don't know, GitHub are matching sponsorships for the first year, so there's still a good few months left in that. So if you make a sponsorship to the channel, GitHub will match it 100% for the next few months. And that's it. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.